So the thing with dragons is, sorry to be this kind of person, right? But dragons, right, are fictional. Dragons are not necessarily things that actually exist. So with things that don't exist, there is no concrete anatomy for how to draw them. So let's talk a bit about that. Dragons were concepts taken from the initial discovery of dinosaur bones. When bones and fossils, that kind of thing, were discovered for the first time, it was like, oh my god, these things are huge. They're behemoths. This is like, this is crazy. You know what that is? I'm going to call that a dragon, right? They, and then from that came fantastical stories made about giant reptiles that were slayed in intense battle in usually a medieval setting, right? With modern day dragons, we have stuff like if we go to D&D, you have like the actual dragons, you have Dragonborn, I play as Dragonborn, right? Dragons, the concept of a dragon has been spread so thin that it no longer really resembles the initial idea of what a dragon was, which is why it's so tough to teach. But if we want to go back to that initial idea of what dragons are, dragons were initially birthed from dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are the ancestors of birds, right? Rather than referencing lizards, when people say like, I'm going to reference a lizard to draw a dragon, I'm going to reference this, reference that, a reptile. Birds are the way to go when it comes to referencing any kind of dragon full body anatomy, if you wanted to stick to that, right? You don't necessarily have to always reference birds. Uh, when I designed corn for the first time, I did reference a raven. Um, but if you wanted to, if you wanted to break down the skeleton in some ways, a bird is generally the way to go. So if we're taking a look at this skeleton, we can very easily break this down, right? I'm not gonna talk about like this skeleton in complete detail, but what this entails, right? Is you have the skull and then like a beak or something like that. And then you've got like, you know, the spine, which kind of goes down like this, curves at the thoracic and then goes back down here. You've got the giant sternum, <laughs> that birds have. Hold on, lock at the elbow. This is the acromion process at the top here, which comes down into the humerus, and then these, which make up the wings. And we've got the pelvis down here. This is technically their femur, right? No, they have they have a separate, they have a different kind of bone, but it's, there's a smaller one here that comes down into another big bone here. It comes down into you know, the big bone, two smaller ones, and then the toes this bent backwards right so that's our modern day bird skeleton right we have something that kind of looks like that right now imagine if we translated this into a dinosaur rather than a bird head but because it's a dinosaur what if this was like a raptor right think of this as if it was just a raptor right we've still got that same kind of cervical thoracic lumbar we still got that. Rather than this giant sternum like this, we've got like a like a rib cage again. We actually had a rib cage, and then our pelvis. And some dinosaurs had long tails, which means that this tailbone is gonna be huge. It's gonna look more like that because it's an extension of the vertebrae. And then we still had these legs bending backwards like this, with the big talons. And then we still had our arms that were bent like this instead, though. They weren't super long to adequate for a for a wing, right? This is all that a dragon is. If we break it down to its really basic terms, right? That's all that it is, really. It's just big. <laughs> it's just a bigger bird, <laughs> right? And then you can even go even further. The thing that connects our arms uh, to the top of our body is called the acromion process. The acromion process is our scapula. You can feel your scapula, it's your shoulder blade. Your shoulder blade that is attached to your collarbone, which you can also feel kind of like right below the base of your neck, right? There's a little hard portion at the top of your shoulder that's called the acromion process. That's where the top of your femur connects to. And then your wing would probably connect somewhere on the spine of the scapula too. And it's just like another arm shape, <laughs> but long. That's it. The way that I always see dragons is just, uh, it's birds with more steps. Like, but what if I don't want my dragon to have multiple legs? What if I don't want my dragon to have wings? What if I, then just don't add it, <laughs> right? That's the thing is like, I can break down this anatomy as much as I want to. This is a fantasy creature. Do whatever you want. And really it can't be wrong. What was voted for today for what I'm going to be drawing is a wyvern, right? But there were other things that I put in there. There were lindworms, there were worms, there was a drake, there was, right? It was like a classic dragon I think I put there too, right? And if you don't know what any of those are, like a lindworm just has like two arms and just the body, right? And then a worm is, is just a danger noodle, right? 
Um, there was one more that I put on there that was like a pair of wings and then no, no limbs. I don't remember the name of that one. Wyverns, what they are is their arms are their wings, but that's quite literally just a bird. Be just like replaced, but like if we just had like a like more reptilian kind of skull and the rib cage, like if you kept that sternum, that giant sternum, the only thing that would be different from a from bird anatomy to this would just be the skull, right? A wyvern is quite literally just a bird, right? And then you have the legs, that kind of thing. But my main takeaway when it comes to drawing dragons to give to you is get creative. I think it's boring when people are like, you have to draw a dragon like this. You have to draw a dragon like that. I think dragons are such open concepts that limiting yourself to one concept of a dragon becomes super boring. Like, I think that it's more interesting for you to find a new way to push the idea of a dragon. If I'm being totally honest, when I heard the topic of dragon, my first thought was to draw my dragonborn character, Korn, but he didn't feel dragon enough when it came to focusing on full dragon anatomy. A wyvern is also what won the poll, if I remember correctly, so I opted to illustrate a different party member, Pierce, and his wyvern companion, Puddles. Wyverns are fun because unlike the more standard European dragon, they have wings for arms like a bat or bird. Especially when designing a dragon, you generally want to follow the anatomy of a bird, but with wyverns specifically, you can also opt to go for more batty anatomy. Bats have their wings go all the way down to their hind legs, so you can get some really cool silhouettes with that in mind. Birds just have their wings end before the start of their legs, but you also need to keep in mind that a good 50 to 70% of those wings aren't actually flesh and bone, but mostly feathers. Their actual wing arm parts are around the same relative size as arms. I tend to go for a mix of the two with a more mammalian-like upper torso, but keeping that side hip joint that birds have for their legs. Just as a fun fact, Puddles is a blue dragon, but I didn't have the time during this stream to actually color him. Speed is a big thing when it comes to streams, so I tend to guesstimate how much time each part of the process will take so that I can not only finish a piece during stream, but also deliver a lesson if the stream calls for it. It's why you see me use a bunch of techniques when it's my turn to stream. For this stream specifically, I knew I couldn't opt for my very simplistic, non-line weight style because I needed to show off proper anatomy, but if I was going to work in a more full and detailed style, I knew I'd have to sacrifice color, so line work was what I could finish. I was going to try for shading too, but it didn't pan out. Puddle started as a baby dragon at the beginning of the campaign, and he still was when I illustrated this, but now he's a bigger wyvern that Pierce can ride as a mount. With that being said, a big thing you need to keep in mind when it comes to winged creatures, though, is that the bigger they are, the bigger their wings need to be. For instance, for an average adult, we need approximately a minimum of 20 foot wingspan to actually get off the ground. So think about how big the wings of a dragon need to be to get them off the ground. Birds can have smaller wings because of their lighter overall weight and hollow bones, but reptilian and mammalian creatures do not, so that's another thing to think about when figuring out their wingspan. Join a virtual class to learn live from our professional artists. Get creative assignments, individual guidance, and real-time feedback on your artwork. Start today and level up your practice. If you learn something new, like and share this with a fellow art nerd. If you love receiving quality and free arts education, subscribe. Here's a couple other videos you can check out next.